Well, hey, y'all. Happy Memorial Day. Well, welcome back. I hope y'all are enjoying your holiday weekend. We've had some changes around here um, that I'm gonna show you in this video. So today, we're gonna talk about trellises. I've had a lot of questions about where we got our present trellises. So I'm gonna talk about those trellises. I'm gonna talk about some trellises we've had for a long time and some trellises that we used before. So you can get a lot of different ideas um, no matter where your kind of budget is at for trellises and then we're gonna take a tour of the garden and we're also going to kind of check in a little bit um, with our new shade setup because we had to solve for you know things climbing up and over the trellis and the Sun hitting those really hard and as we go into these triple digits so we made some changes with that this weekend so I'm gonna share all of that with you and um, I hope you get some good tips so check it out I'm gonna start with our first trellis which is pretty popular a lot of gardeners use this and this is called like a cattle panel because um, you know it's kind of set up to be ideal with its smaller than bigger spaces to be like a little gate part of a fence around a cattle area um, so we got this at the tractor supply company um, here in Tolleson Arizona and then we got the pickets so these are like, so this cattle panel is 16 foot um, by about 50 inches. So it's about a little more than four foot across and then 16 all the way this way. Then we got four pickets and these pickets are about five foot um, tall. My husband said we probably could have gotten away with getting shorter ones. Um, and we didn't get a picket pounder you know my husband just used a soft mallet or whatever to pound them down so a picket pounder probably would be a better idea especially like if you don't have a husband to pound your pickets in so the pickets are about 250 and this cattle panel is about $22. I know it was less than 25. So four pickets cuz there's two over here and there's two over here. So four pickets and a cattle panel, you could have a trellis for about $30. And there's a couple of places here that we have kind of wired the pickets to the trellis but we haven't really done anything elaborate you could but they're kind of the tension of having them in between the bales and the pickets kind of forces them to stay in place and then as stuff grows on it is kind of the rest of what we feel like is weighting it down so that is the gist of our cattle panel trellises and if you don't have a tractor supply probably talk to like your feed store or someplace like that in town i don't think home depot would have them um but that's our cattle pedal trellises now on one side of our raised bed um of this bed right here on that side that trellis right here is just like this trellis right here and this trellis we made out of um, conduit um, we just got these corner pieces right here it's probably better to show you in the sunshine so we have these corner pieces and then and home tebow doesn't typically cut conduit for you but my husband just kept walking around and asking people at home depot until he found somebody that would cut it for him and then we got these little mesh kind of string trellises at home depot too and they're not that easy to find they're kind of in a weird area where you find like by the the tools um at home depot the gardening tools like shovels and sprinklers and hoses and stuff like that that's where these little trellises are going to be so you can just make them as short or as big as you want and then tie them on to the surface so this has worked for us through several seasons and even though it looks really flimsy and like nothing all of these well, I think we've only replaced one of them and that's because and it's usually because I cut them 
in some way or another. So that's another simple cheap way that you can custom make a trellis for maybe a smaller space or a bed where you're not really wanting to get into the full like trellis with the cattle panel. Now you can't see it that good, but this right here is kind of like a panel piece from a futon. Cause y'all have y'all heard me talk about bulk trash. So my husband picked up this in bulk trash and last year we used it um, kind of where some of my flowers are now. We had beans growing. So we were able to just lean this up against the house and all the beans just crawled right up through that. Some of them we worked through, but that was a real handy, easy thing um, to upcycle into a trellis as well. Another thing that we used um, is this chair. This is like the, a chair back that, you know, the seat is not attached to it in any way. And we pushed that up against some beds to get stuff to vine up and over that into a cooler spot in the yard. And then one more thing I'll show you is a baby gate. And these you see again oftentimes in the bulk trash or you might see them for cheap on Craigslist or you might even have one at home. But if you had two of these, it's be real easy to make, you know, like an A-frame trellis that things could go up and over. Or you could use this again to lean up against a wall or lean up against the house or lean up against something and let things trellis up it. Or you could take something like that and a chair back and combine that into some type of working A-frame as a trellis also. So there are several different things that you can do to get yourself some kind of trellis system set up. So don't make it hard and don't think that you have to get super fancy. I mean, obviously you can get fancy for like 30 bucks or something if you've got a way to haul it. And you know what? I'll try and find a picture of us hauling that trellis home because we don't have a truck so it was super first class redneck and if i can find it i'll stick it right here right now but i hope that helped you out those are the different things that we've used for trellises and i want to remind you that the trellis that's on the deck we actually just folded that cattle panel over and we've tied it to itself on the bottom and i'll show you that real quick so you can see that if you don't have the pickets and you're on a flat surface there are some different things that you can do um, to get that cattle panel to bend over you could you know use some blocks to um, center it in the middle of or you can do like we did and i'll show you that real quick where we just tied it up so i hope this is helpful see these beds these bags are not super heavy i mean maybe if they've got you know five or ten pounds of soil in them each so that's not the whole thing that's keeping this trellis there's this we've got this jute down here that's not again it's not super tight and it's not super dependable but we're hoping that the vining catches up quick before the winds get here to help anchor down this trellis but if we need to you know again we could go and put cinder blocks along here and tie this down to some cinder blocks to keep it steady and on the deck and not moving away from these plants or from the deck. I wanna share a little trellis tip with you also that if you happen to plant something that is a vining plant and you maybe didn't realize it and you put it in a place that you thought it would bush, um, a way that you can help it get to a trellis because see the trellis is over here almost like two foot away from where the plant is so what I did is I came down here and I put a soft loop knot with some jute twine down here and then I worked it around the plant and I ran a line all the way up to my trellis so over time it was easy for the plant to attach trindles and get up that to where it was all the way over so now this plant is all the way up to here and it all started because i used that jute to make the connection over to the trellis and you can see that also happened over here with this um, plant here i need to remove that leaf but i, I also tied up from the base of that and then got that plant worked all the way up to where it grew all the way over to there so you can make mistakes with plant placement and that's a way that you can fix it 
haven't given you an update on this pineapple in a while, but this is it and this is how it's doing. And I keep meaning to get it off of this deck because I think it's probably hot, but it's still happy, so might not mess with it for a little bit. The climbers over here are finally starting to get into some climbing action. So some of this is really me kind of working it into the trellis. Um, but it's getting long enough to start climbing, so it's time to get it lined up. So over here, kind of the same thing. Um, these need to get a little bit taller so they can get to the trellis. But I worked this loofah in there, and now we just need to get this bean. It needs to get a little bit taller, and then it can start running up too. So happy with where the trellis is going. The strawberries, because it got cooler this week, my husband kind of betrayed a couple of things in the garden and didn't do his Wednesday watering but everything kind of recovered okay so we're not gonna hold that against him too much okay so in the battle of the okras it actually seems like this okra is staying cooler and staying happier uh this okra a lot of times because it's got this covering up the soil it's losing out maybe because i'm lazy <laughs> on getting a little bit of an extra drink which i think the containers especially buckets really need and so this one's been a little droopy this week and this one is really caught up and got a lot of extra growth so i'm going to stick with keeping them around the buckets instead of trying to cover the soil too and that's going to be my solution and the girls little growing experiments this is a cantaloupe and it's really going wild whereas this armenian is a little these okra are happy i cleaned up some of this flower bed and i've got some i think it's two o'clock or four o'clock trying to come in there now this is kind of getting beat up by um, the sun in the morning a lot of the lettuces you can see are bolting so i'm gonna start cleaning this out pretty good and then i'm gonna figure out either another kind of living mulch like this to plant or i'm gonna maybe get um, another layer of compost in here maybe a mulch but i'm not a real fan of mulch and that's against what everybody else says but you can ask me sometime why i'm that way this pepper's coming along these are struggling i need to get them either further into the shade or let them go tomato row is doing good again we had a little bit of suffering down here from a couple of things that missed their wednesday watering but otherwise we're really loving life over here and got no complaints the oregano is happy the lavender is just loving life and blooming and just continuing so i really want to propagate it but i got to get one before it actually gets a bud on it standing here under my new shade structure you can see that this bed is happy it's producing it's climbing we picked um a zucchini um, this week that I'll show you off of this plant and it's got another one going so that'll be like the second zucchini off of that got lots of green beans coming in here this just got watered so it's kind of and down here are actually some big ones so I'm gonna pick these but I wanted to leave them to show you and I think I'm just gonna snap them in half and throw them in the freezer so that I can get a good set and I might find something to kind of prop this up but otherwise everything is super happy in here this Mama Jamma got fertilized, if you got that. And my YouTube stories this week are on Instagram. And this was climbing along the shade cloth. So I'm gonna figure out something to connect it over to this trellis so that it can keep doing life. And this spaghetti squash got fertilized, so it's happy. And this one keeps making females like this one i think has got the best chance and i'm really thinking about propping this guy up to give me some more room there in the bell to stick some more things in because a lot of things that i had that were underneath squashes like that bean have just kind of gotten taken over and we want to change that oh look here's a butternut squash that when that flower looks like that it typically means that it's going to open so hopefully this flower will open at the same time because they both look 
close with that little pucker and then the bees have been doing my pollination work so hopefully we'll get a beautiful little butternut going there now this pumpkin did not get pollinated because we had a big piece of shade cloth here that was kind of making it hard to get to so now we're just waiting for it to keep going and see there's another female right here and hopefully we can get it pollinated some more females along there and get our trellis filled in so another little kind of peek going that way into our little jungle and there's our garden so y'all know we love our pvc pipe and we're you know we're about to this is it you know we're about to go into permanent triple digits for the next three months and so this this one piece of shade cloth was doing well but obviously we've got things coming up over the trellises and you can see right now in like 90 degree day they're kind of just lay down a little bit and as it goes on they'll just kind of get a little bit more limp so we're putting up this frame that we hopefully <laughs> none of our neighbors say anything to the HOA about because it's definitely kind of on the line of not so legal. But, so we're building just kind of this general frame that we can do shade cloth up over the trellises. And then we'll take out this, this long piece here and then we'll have one going down the middle. Um, so, but I just wanted to kind of show you where it's at um, since we're talking about um, how we set up our trellises today. And... I'll catch up with you in a minute when it's done and as we start to put the shade cloth on it. Now we've got basically all of our little lines ran that we can attach the shade cloth to. So this shade cloth is going to stay here, but now like this one in the middle is going to disappear and we're going to go up a level so that we can get a more inclusive shade. So we'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. And um, I go into more detail about what's well, just basic. You know, we just figured out where we needed the poles to be, and then we put, we drilled holes on either side, and then used zip ties to attach them to our stakes that are already holding up our trellises. All right, so this is a final look at um, our new little shade structure, and not everything is permanent. Um, I've got clips holding a lot of things in place. And when the wind really kicks up here for monsoon season, um, that's not gonna be enough to hold this. So I'm gonna go back in and tie it, maybe use some zip clamps in different places to make sure that it stays tight to the PVC. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with my simple little PVC structure that got all of my garden under some shade. Well, I hope those tips on trellises was helpful for you and gave you some ideas of ways that you could either buy or create some trellises of your own. And I especially hope that your garden is growing great and that you've got your shade cloth up and you've got a watering schedule routine going and that everything's going great. And that's the thing that we're gonna talk about next is the next video is gonna be about our watering system. A lot of people have had questions about that and we have had a lot of success with it. So we're gonna share that with you next week. But until then, I hope you have the best day ever, and I look forward to checking in with you again real soon.